it was impossible to say how much it meant to me to be there or to speak of all the things I probably learned from those few afternoons while lurking in the dark. Joe Loss led his band for almost 60 years, come rain or shine, or changes of style, and that is no mean achievement. A band continues in his name to this day. Sometimes later, my dad let me in on one of those band secrets. Joe Loss's energetic showmanship apparently didn't always make for an entirely accurate beat. If there was ever any minor descent in the ranks, they would adhere exactly to his baton and take evil glee in winding the tempo up and down like a wonky gramophone. It was a subtle, almost imperceptible form of insubordination, but it probably acted as a safety valve for a group of men who worked in such close proximity. Six days a week in St. Dance Hall, the band got just two weeks holiday a year like any other working man, but it would also be their job to provide the entertainment when everyone else was celebrating Christmas or New Year's Eve. They worked hard when they weren't at the Palais or another London ballroom. They were doing radio broadcasts or touring the country. Some of my earliest memories are of my dad arriving home with a big stuffed animal under his arm or a small painted plaster donkey that he'd promised to bring back from a tour of Ireland. I have photographs, but no actual memory of my mother carrying me as an infant on the sands of Douglas during an engagement on the Isle of Man in the mid-fifties. In that picture, my mam is wearing pearls and full makeup, but it really wasn't that glamorous life with band members always changing from damp clothes in freezing or overheated dressing rooms or crushed together for night drives in drafty coaches along foggy A and B roads. Joe Losk was a stickler for appearance, punctuality, and discipline. He seemed to regard my father almost like another son constantly questioning him about his family origins, as if unwilling to accept that they were Irish and not Jewish. He even forgave him a fair few transgressions. I recall one night, my mother had let me stay up late to watch my dad on Come Dancing. In those days, it was a live broadcast that had nothing to do with the stunt casting celebrities. It was purely a competition between amateur ballroom dancing teams. So I knew there was little chance my dad would be singing, but it was still a novelty to see him on television. The moment the camera panned across to his side of the bandstand, I think I could tell something was amiss from my mother's reaction. The show had opened with the Latin dances, and my father was up behind the conga drum playing with rather more force and animation <laughs> than the number really required. My man went out of the room to put the kettle on, quietly registered her dismay at my father's fairly obvious intoxication. A short time later, a hallway telephone rang, and I could hear a low but anxious tone to her side of the conversation. My mother seemed to spend quite a lot of time on the phone to one or the other orchestra wives, alternately sympathizing or receiving consolation over their husband's latest jag. The details were too obscure to me then, but from what I overheard and came to understand, Drink and other women were generally involved. After that appearance, my dad remained fired for about three days before Joe Loss relented and hired him back. I don't recall exactly when my parents parted because even after he went to live elsewhere, my dad would come around a lot. There was no big ominous announcement of the parting, or if there was, I have dismissed it from my mind. He 
still sometimes would arrive on a Sunday morning and take me to the 11 o'clock sung Black Mass at St. Elizabeth on Richmond Hill, which they retained long after was abandoned elsewhere by papal decree. Then we'd all eat Sunday lunch together while listening to two-way family favorites, a BBC request show linking military families with their kin serving overseas while the dedications to a lance corporal at a bfpo in west germany played in the background my dad would tell stories reminiscing about a drummer and painter friend of his from birkenhead or recounting tales of his working week ross definitely had charm perhaps a little too much young women would call our number late at night looking to make mischief until we were obliged to take our listing from the directory. Although I was never allowed to go to the palais after dark, I know that the nearly empty dance floor of the matinees was absolutely packed at night and not always with entirely salubrious types. My mother recalls one of my dad's more dubious acquaintances extending his hand to her with the greeting, Hello, I'm Phil the Thief. And this was only a few convenient steps away from Hammersmith Police Station. <laughs>